Today's video is brought to you by Upstart. Hey, brother! Guys, you know Voldemort, right? Invisible, flowing hair, bad at deep breaths, spent a year living under a turban, unable to get past the dog. Seriously, though, the guy who meticulously planned this unbelievably complicated plan to take an ex-Death Eater who was presumed to be dead to pose as an Auror and Professor to guide Harry through the Triwizard Tournament all the way to the middle of a maze where he would touch a cop, couldn't figure out a dog for a year? Not for nothing, but as the living embodiment of all evil, it doesn't feel like that much of a stretch to think that Voldemort would just kill a dog. But who knows? I mean, maybe Voldemort is a dog lover, which would make sense because dogs are awesome. Exhibit A. This is my dog, Chewy. I know, right? But no, while I absolutely love the idea that Voldemort secretly has a soft spot for dogs and planning weddings, it baffles me that for a guy whose plan for just about everything is just kill it, he didn't think to kill it. Today, we find out why. Guys, before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Upstart. Getting out of credit card debt can sometimes feel like trying to get past a giant three-headed dog that's guarding the trap door to the sweet, sweet free fall to the plant-filled basement of financial security. I think that analogy lost its way somewhere. But you know what I mean? And during these kind of turbulent times, having a little extra financial security can go a long way towards providing a little extra peace of mind. And that is where Upstart can help. Upstart is a revolutionary lending platform that goes beyond the traditional credit score and takes into consideration you when determining your rates. Things like your education and job history actually help you out on your way towards savings. Plus, it is fast and simple to check your rate, and because it is just a soft pull, it won't affect your credit score. The hard pull doesn't happen until you actually accept that rate and proceed forward with your application. Free yourselves from the burden of high interest credit card debt and get yourself into that sweet, sweet plant-filled basement so you can start using your money your way. See why Upstart has a 4.9 out of 5 star rating on Trustpilot and hurry over to upstart.com slash SCB to find out how low your rate can be. It only takes a few minutes. Again, that's upstart.com slash SCB. Link in the description down below. Okay, so first of all, let's just start with the basics. What even ever happened to Fluffy? I mean, just being so physically large and playing such a big role in the first book only to just never be mentioned again by Harry or Hagrid ever. Okay, once in the first paragraph of the 14th chapter of Chamber of Secrets, you got me! But seriously, like for the rest of the book series, the word Fluffy is only ever connected to like Crookshanks, Umbridge's jacket, Madame Rosmerda's fluffy high-heeled slippers, and Creature's ear hair. Could you possibly think of items that are less alike that all have the common factor of fluffy? Anyway, Fluffy the dog, three heads, you know him. He's not small. Even just putting him in the Forbidden Forest seems kind of dangerous. Which is exactly what Dumbledore thought. Just after Harry's first year, Hagrid did in fact put him back in the forest and Dumbledore was all like, all in favor of sending the three-headed dog back to Greece? Just me? But that's everyone. Which in case you were unaware is actually where Fluffy has been quietly residing ever since. Well, except for back in 2019, can't forget that taco truck incident. I actually do love the fact that he is from Greece though, because it's such a nod to Cerberus, the three-headed dog that is actually from Greek mythology and known to guard the underworld. And Cerberus, like many other creatures in Greek mythology is immortal. So it kind of got me wondering, is Fluffy immortal? Could that be the reason why Voldemort didn't kill him? Because he couldn't? Also, if it's immortal, does that take anything away from Hagrid's credentials as like ability to care for magical creatures when one of those magical creatures literally can't die? Personally, I don't actually think it matters because I personally don't believe that Fluffy is immortal. To me, that just feels like a detail that would have been brought up somewhere along the way. Three-headed dog, immortal, key characteristics. So I think that Fluffy could be killed, but then the next question that comes up is whether or not he could have been killed by the Avada Kedavra curse. This turns out to be somewhat of an interesting question because we do know that different 
different creatures have lessened vulnerabilities to certain spells, like trolls or giants or dragons or even Hagrid. For example, it takes seven to eight dragon tamers and Charlie Weasley to take down the Hungarian Horntail, but why is it so much harder? The obvious comparison between all of those examples is that they are huge and likewise, so is Fluffy. However, if we go back to that example with the dragon, Harry notices that some of the spells are literally just showering off. So you could argue that it's the dragon's armor that is protecting it. But then Hermione explains that the reason why Hagrid is able to withstand so many spells is due to his giant's blood. So maybe the argument becomes like, size or armor is irrelevant if you have the right kind of blood with the right kind of magical properties to protect you against certain kinds of magic. Either way though, all of that might even just be irrelevant altogether because that's just talking about stunners and we're talking about the killing curse. It's kind of hard to imagine a single spell just killing a dragon, but I do actually believe that that's what would happen if it was properly performed against it. And we know from Moody or well, Crouch that there is no counter curse against it at all, which makes me believe that regardless of anything to do with your armor or blood, it wouldn't matter, it would still kill you. Granted, he also tells him that it requires a powerful bit of magic behind it for it to work as well, and that probably even the entire class casting the spell at him couldn't cause his nose to bleed, which is slightly confusing because even as Moody or Crouch himself points out in that exact same lesson, the only person to have ever survived this spell is Harry. So if they all cast it at him and he only gets a bloody nose, doesn't that also make him the man that lived? And the answer is no, because I don't think that they would be casting the spell properly, which is to say, not casting the spell at all. His example of getting a bloody nose is not actually all that accurate. It suggests the idea that some varying level of success can be had if you don't cast it exactly right. But that's not actually true. This spell is much more binary. It either works or it doesn't. Meaning if the spell is in fact cast correctly, then no size or magic can protect you against it, except for sacrificial love. Which to be fair, if Hagrid was there standing between Fluffy and someone trying to kill Fluffy, he would probably sacrifice himself to save Fluffy. So in that one particular instance, Fluffy is immune. But normally he's not. Fluffy can be killed. And if he is the only thing standing between Quirrell in the stone for the entire year, why does he not just kill him? Also, can we just take a quick pause right there to appreciate how much people underestimate Hagrid? Like the other people defending the stone are McGonagall and Sprout and Snape and Flitwick, and it's Hagrid's obstacle he can't get past. No one gonna get past Fluffy. <laughs> Ain't a soul knows how, except for me and Dumbledore. I shouldn't have told you that. And well, Dumbledore's as well, but that one was literally unbeatable. All part of his big plan to test Harry. Full playlist by checking the card. Point is, we know that Quirrell thinks that he can get past the rest of the obstacles very early on in the year because he makes a go at it on Halloween. Turn it all in the dungeon! Thought you ought to know. <laughs> He even tries to kill Harry himself earlier in the year during a Quidditch match. So like, what is actually holding him back here? Well, my first thought was that Quirrell and or Voldemort is just not magically capable of doing it at this point in time. Let me clarify. It's not that he can't kill him. It's that he can't kill him. Make sense? What I mean is Voldemort obviously doesn't have a body and only barely exists. And he later explains that while he was possessing other animals in the forest, it was so painful for those animals that they couldn't last very long and eventually died. This makes it sound like he's draining a lot of the energy out of the creatures that he's possessing and maybe the same is happening to Quirrell and he's incapable of performing the spell. Again, going back to Moody Crouch, he explains that it requires a powerful bit of magic to perform the spell. Plus later on when Voldemort actually instructs Quirrell to seize Harry, he does it like with his bare hands instead of casting any spells. Like how difficult would it have been to magically subdue this 11 year old? Hermione literally did it like 15 pages ago. Petrificus totalis. 
But maybe it's very hard if you've had your powers drained by having Voldemort occupy yourself and in the process drinking unicorn blood. So that's one explanation, but I think that the idea of killing Fluffy would have been a dead giveaway that someone had attempted to or did successfully steal the stone. Quirrell thinks that he knows how to get through all of the obstacles, but if he kills Fluffy and then gets stuck on one of them, he's really tipped his hand a bit. Although to be fair, attempting to kill Harry Potter in front of an entire stadium of people should have also tipped his hand. Like a lot. I don't know why this is under investigated. Except it's because Dumbledore totally knows what's happening and he has a big plan to test Harry. Full blows by checking the card. The point is, a dead Fluffy would absolutely set off the sirens that, hey, someone's trying to steal the stone, let's move it again. On that note, even if he is 100% sure that he can get past the rest of the obstacles, dead Fluffy would also indicate Something happened, the stone is stolen. And this is a big ol' no-no for Voldemort, who, as we know from Goblet of Fire, had this huge plan to return in secret so that he is able to build up his army and his own strength without anybody knowing. At the end of the day, if you're Voldemort, the absolute best strategy is to get through all of the obstacles completely unnoticed and recover the stone and get away. I mean, after all, how often do you think the rest of the teachers or Dumbledore are going through all of the obstacles just to make sure it's still there? Because I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I don't necessarily have time for a game of chess that might kill me literally every day. But there you go, guys. That is our explanation as to why Quirrell goes an entire year struggling to figure out how to get past a dog instead of just killing it when I definitely think that he was capable of doing so. For my question of the day, which of the obstacles to get to the Philosopher's Stone would have given you the most trouble? Let us know in the towel section down below. But guys, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to check out Dumbledore's big plan, we have an entire playlist. You can check it out right up here. But otherwise, guys, until next time, bye.